Okay, Saturday morning, everything's done. Radiator's installed, or heat exchanger, whatever you want to call it. Completely installed. Um, this is like I was saying yesterday, this is the uh, nipple that I cut off. And if you ever wanted to cut them off, you just take a saw, cut them off, and then if you do that, you lay a piece of paper on here and squish it down. Get yourself a little template, which is kind of what this is here. Just cut that out of a piece of aluminum, stick it in the hole, tick it up, you're all done. Little brackets on the side, hold it in real nice. And uh, we seem to be pretty solid. Got plenty of room in here. Hide my whole hand in there. I uh, got the center bracket back on. This is the outlet, of course. We're going to put a little spit tank on here with a little uh, bleed off. This is the uh, hot water coming back in. I'll put it down low because there's other parts that have to come in here. We'll talk about that much later. In any case, um, the way it all works is the cold water comes out of the bottom of the radiator on the left, goes immediately into the pump with large diameter piping, goes straight up, comes right up here, and for everybody's benefit, I made a little bunch of arrows, goes into the intercooler, comes out of the intercooler, and runs straight back down, runs down, and comes underneath the car, and we put it right here. So that it sits underneath, <clears throat> got a couple of clamps that runs across the bottom of the main brace, comes across again, comes back inside the main brace, and straight up, real simple, real short, no uh, big hard bends or anything like that. And this, like I said, sucker is rigid. It's got a lot of flexibility, but it's rigid. It's not coming off of there. So we're all set with that. And then uh, we got all the stuff in the rest of the engine is all the same. Nothing changed except basically the um, intercooler here. So we're good to go. All we got to do now is just. Uh, Put the front end back on it and play a little bit with the pressure inlet and we'll be uh, set to get. By the way, when I put in my uh, high intensity lights, I dropped them in under here. You can see them pretty easily. And then uh, over here, of course, it's even easier to see on the driver's side. A little spot RTV just to hold them resiliently, but hold them. And the horns went in here. Get a flashlight going here. The horns fit right up here in the front notch. Gets them out of the way, keeps them out of the road debris and all the rest of that stuff. Still near the grill so you can let all the sound out. So it's been a lot of fun. Pretty simple installation. Of course we've got a little petcock down here to drain because you always want to have a way of getting rid of it. And that's it. About $175 for the uh, heat exchanger. You know, $25 bucks for hose and uh, a couple of little fittings like uh, hose clamps, that kind of thing. The big deal was just uh, welding the radiator up and uh, cutting an inlet down here, which is just a piece of pipe, and another piece over here. And I made it uh, just a piece of old pipe from a RV store. Just a piece of, uh, I don't know, I think it's like 800,000 diameter. Heavy wall tubing. Something that's gonna hold up. So that's it. The rest of this, we'll get it posted Monday or Tuesday and we'll be set to go. Have a good one, enjoy, bye. Oh, couldn't go away. By the way, the sucker got four gallons a minute. I was hoping for a touch more, but it went just exactly up to four gallons a minute. So that's a significant advantage. The original stocker, I got one and a half gallons a minute. When I put on the LET, I got uh, 3.7. When I put on my intercooler over here, I got 3.1, which is still pretty good in a lot of surface area. This bad boy here, with all the capacity he's got, and about a gallon of uh, capacity liquid, a little over a gallon, um, was running 4.0. Couldn't get it above it, just wouldn't go. But 4.0 it was. And by the way, the bubbles, at 20 minutes of running, you still get micro bubbles. So uh, it takes a while to purge these things out. Like I said, that's why we're going to put a spit tank in here. I think that'll be it. Adios. Okay, well, this is the final fit up. Get everything on here. Take off the grill. And you can see what we got here. Got the whole thing set up. The air cleaner's back in. I turned it at an angle. Some people have been talking about getting water in the air cleaner. Well, if it's down at an angle, you've got a whole lot of room for water. I put some window screen across the grill here just to keep bugs off. Makes it a lot easier to clean off the radiator. Doesn't add any real restriction, but it is cool. We got the uh, spit tank all connected. And one of the other things we did here, uh, let me get back over here is if you look real close, we got some of the thermal instrumentation here. This is so we can uh, monitor the water coming out and the water going back in. 
but uh, this went in real good there's still plenty of room in here for all kinds of stuff which we're going to be working on later this guy over here fits up just like ever it did from needs wings so uh, all that's cool everything's done and with the grill back on you'd never know it one of the thing I did do is I put a little baffle in here just to keep the top of the radiator from uh, having air go around it just so we get maximum airflow because we're looking for some uh, good cooling numbers in any case that's what it all looks like and uh, it goes together pretty simply actually this is a much easier project than I first thought so there we go have a good one